In this edition of the OBG Corner, editorial manager of the PNG Report, Mark Venditti, chats with KK Kingston's Michael Kingston. Good evening and welcome back to OBG Corner. Tonight our guest is uh, Michael Kingston from KK Kingston, one of the largest manufacturing company in PNG. Michael was born here, he studied in Australia where he completed uh, economics and uh, is back in Ley where his company is based to contribute to the growth of the national economy as well as his region. Michael, thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael. Um, since I arrived in um, Papua New Guinea, everybody keeps on telling me that uh, Papua New Guinea is not only Port Moresby. This and the true. reality <laughs> is somewhere else. Nevertheless, when you come to Leigh, that's where your company is based, you do feel a little bit that Papua New Guinea, though it's a little bit Port, uh, port Moresby center, in the sense the infrastructure is a little bit behind this is and true. everything else. Is that a fair assessment then? Definitely a fair assessment. And it's become more acute, I suppose, over the last five or seven years. Obviously, Port Moresby has been moving ahead in great strides, leaps and bounds even, whereas I think other regional centres of Papua New Guinea have perhaps lagged behind. Okay. But it's nice to see that, particularly in the last 18 months or so, the government is investing a lot of money in developing infrastructure outside of Port Moresby. Okay. Mm. And you do see actually the result of that? In, in Absolutely, LA? definitely. In Leigh, for instance, the roads are probably the best they've been in the last 10 years, perhaps okay. 15 years. Still a long way to go, mind you, but it's nice to see forward motion. Still coming from the airport is a little bit bumpy. Hey, absolutely, <laughs> but hopefully in another two years when they finish the job, it'll be a very nice road. I see. Same thing with the, the Leigh Port. Um, Leigh Port has improved tremendously over the last three years or so. And we went from a point where there was huge congestion, literally dozens of ships queued outside the port waiting for a berth, to today where everything pretty much docks on time, goods move fairly efficiently. I see. Definitely improvements. So tell us about the potential of Leigh. Everybody talks about Leigh as the, the hub, manufacturer hub, not only for mm. Papua New Guinea, but perhaps for the region. Is this real, uh, it's a real possibility, you think? Well, it's, it's certainly true, I think, that Leigh is often described as the engine room of the PNG economy. Um, approximately 60% of all imported goods come through the Leigh port. And Leigh, I guess, is of strategic importance in that it, it provides a distribution hub for access to the highlands and the New Guinea islands. So yes, layers of strate strategic importance, I suppose, for the PNG economy. It's not the manufacturing hub that it should be yet. Mm -hmm. I think there are a number of impediments to growth of manufacturing industries still to overcome, but there's a lot of potential, absolutely. I see. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing provides a lot of those jobs that Papua New Guinea will need in the future. Absolutely. Nevertheless, it feels that they, the country and the government perhaps is still too much focused on an extractive industry. I mean, we can see why, of course. but uh, it's, it's, on the it's long run it's not sustainable, is it? Absolutely correct. I mean, if we look at the total number of people employed by extractive industries, whether it's mining, oil or gas, the number is absolutely dwarfed by businesses like agriculture and manufacturing. Many more Papua New Guineans are employed by those two industries than the extractive industries combined. Okay. Also, it's far more sustainable. Um, everyone accepts that at a certain point in time, resources will be spent, the gas will be used up or the gold will be used up. What then will create employment and growth for the country moving forward? Hopefully manufacturing agriculture provides some of those answers. I see. Mm. Nevertheless, so the, the sector has sort of uh, felt uh, the, the completion of the, the LNG, uh, the PNG LNG. Uh, numbers are not as good as uh, you would expect in manufacturing at the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. I yeah. think we feel it across every sector of the PNG economy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had five years of extremely strong growth and at the completion of LNG construction, it was a very quick and sudden stop for everyone, I think, mm. manufacturing included. But that's a good thing. We can't grow at double-digit figures forever. Sooner or later, things have to slow down. We have to consolidate. It's yeah. also unfair sometimes to benchmark uh, the performance of the country with those exceptional years. And perhaps you should look Absolutely. at more of an holistic approach. In and and a, a long-term thing. And I'd also argue that perhaps GDP is not necessarily the best metric to use in these situations. Something mm. like GNP might be more relevant. Because, for instance, GDP is heavily influenced by the volume of LNG that's being exported. Now that we're in the production phase, very few people are employed by PNG LNG. And so the direct flow on impacts for the PNG economy of these vast gas exports aren't felt so widely. So GDP can be a little misleading. It is. Mm -hmm. I understand. I agree with that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, manufacturers are saying um, infrastructure is just not there yet to support uh, uh, the industry. And at the end of the day, if the tariffs mm. will be brought down as much as APEC is saying they should be by 2018, mm. many people are saying there will be no manufacturing in PNG. Do you agree with that? Partially, yes. Infrastructure presents a major challenge to manufacturing businesses in Papua New Guinea. And not only manufacturing, 
know, tra the transport industry and so on is also badly affected by this. And we're facing the twin squeeze on one hand, the increasing costs of doing business due to these in infrastructure constraints, at the same time diminishing tariffs and ever increasing competition from regional and global players. So yes, manufacturers generally are feeling the pinch, but I think it's probably over dramatic to say that come 2018 there will be no more manufacturing in PNG. Uh, I think these challenging situations force all of us to relook at our business models and find more creative, more competitive, more efficient ways of doing what we do. Talking about business model, your mm. company is quite interesting. I mean, you're one of the largest manufacturers, as we said. Mm. Uh, you're, you're doing some interesting project. When I was in Leia, it was quite interesting to, mm. to hear about. You want to tell us about it? Biodiesel, for me, by far, was the most interesting. You want to tell us about it? Yeah, that? absolutely. Yeah. So we, we have a long-standing business in packaging cooking oil for resale and distribution in PNG. And we'd noticed that you know, our scrap factors were approximately 1%. And we're putting through, let's say, 1 million litres of oil a month. So 1% is quite a substantial amount. There's around 10,000 litres of oil that's wasted. And we're looking at this thinking, hey, there must be a productive use for this waste, which shouldn't be just thrown away. And we came up with the idea of converting it into biodiesel. We've run a number of small trials internally, um, just running small 500 litre batches. We've run six vehicles and a number of our gensets on it. It's working very, very well. Fantastic. Yeah, so it, it take, gives us the opportunity to go from just wasting this stuff to turn it into something that's productive and beneficial, and perhaps something that's a source of a future competitive advantage. When you hear that sort of story, though, you mm. think like that technology exists, the, mm. the capacity exists. Why there is not more of that? Why do we keep on relying so much on, 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 on the conventional uh, uh, forms of energy? We're far from unique. There are, there are a number of companies around PNG that are doing the same thing. I'm aware of, for instance, an agribusiness on Kakar Island that is also generating biodiesel from the coconuts that they produce. What's interesting is I, I think we don't, the media perhaps and the business community don't give enough attention to the good news stories that mm. are out there. I there see. are so many examples of PNG companies doing creative, innovative things, even world class projects that they don't get the attention. It seems that we often focus too much on the negatives. But there are a lot of positives out there. Absolutely. So I have to take the blame indirectly then. <laughs> <Perhaps>. <laughs> I'll be happy to take it. <laughs> there are as many good news stories out there as there are bad news stories. Absolutely. Yeah. But what, it, what I think the message is, is that those companies who want to stick to their old business models and simply complain about the way things are going, they probably won't have a future. Those businesses who are willing to adapt and evolve to the changing conditions in PNG, you will survive and prosper. You have to be innovative to stay afloat. Absolutely. Is that, would you say that really your goal when you came back to PNG, is that what you wanted to add to the, to the mix? Your experience international, your, your energy, your, your will to I get things to, done? I wanted to make a contribution. I mean, I, before I came back to PNG, I worked in the development sector for a while. So I'd worked with AusAid and a number of other NGOs. And my particular specialty was microfinance. I'd always been interested, I guess my goal was to try and leave this world a better place when I die. Mm. But I found working in the aid sector that I felt I was spinning my wheels at times. And we had some successes, but very often we got tied up in bureaucracy. You didn't feel like you were getting as much done as you would like to. I came back to PNG and it gives me the opportunity to get my hands dirty. And albeit in a smaller environment, uh, we have a company of about 800 people. It's a smaller environment, but I can make a real tangible impact every day. So Michael, it's not a coincidence that somebody like yourself is back in PNG. We, we really feel that that sort of brain uh, drainage that we have seen in the past uh, mm. is coming back and, and a lot of intelligent people are, mm. are looking at PNG as, a, as an opportunity. Uh, is that really a trend? I mean, Look, I think it's true and, and perhaps it's partly because the global economy is softer and more difficult than it was five or even ten years ago. Um, people are looking at PNG and thinking, hey, there are opportunities for me back at home. I also think that perhaps this is a pattern that's repeated in, in many countries over time. I mean, look at the Chinese experience. We've seen a lot of overseas Chinese returning back to China to contribute. That's true. We've seen this in, in many other countries around the world. Perhaps it's just a part of the development of the nation. But I'm, it's certainly a trend is, is beginning, I believe. I'm far from unique. There are a lot of other young people who've grown up in PNG who are coming back who want to leave their mark on the place. I see. It's a good thing. What do you think PNG can actually contribute to a regional level, not only uh, domestically? Mm. PNG definitely has a leadership role to take up in the region. PNG is obviously the largest economy. Geographically, it's the largest country in the South Pacific. Economically, it's the superpower of the region. So PNG uh, has to step up and take a leadership role amongst the Pacific Island groups, in particular the Melanesian group, but in the broader South Pacific. And I think we're seeing that, particularly with the current leadership, 
um, and even with the last government, there's a greater level of engagement with regional and global um, organisations to make PN to cement PNG's position in, in that leadership role in the region. That's it's happening. Thing. It's happening. It's happening. And long overdue. <laughs> Well, uh, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, the mm. last thing I wanted to ask you, I know that you're, you're doing some also un interesting development with the company. You're developing mm. a 10 actor, actors of land uh, for a single uh, site of uh, distribution. You want to maybe tell us yeah, about absolutely. that? Yeah, absolutely. I spoke previously about uh, all of us need to identify ways of being more efficient and more competitive. Now, we'd identified that with our current configuration of six different manufacturing and distribution sites in Lai, it was very inefficient. We were wasting money by moving goods between our sites. So we identified in the long term we need to have a single site for all of our production and distribution operations. That'll take vast amounts of cost out of the business and make us more competitive in the long run. So we've procured this large 10 hectare site and over time, between five and 10 years, I suppose, we'll be investing nearly 100 million kina to develop that and turn it into what we hope will be a world-class manufacturing operation in Lai. And I'll be very happy to come and see it. And Please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Pleasure. For welcome to the show. Yep. Thank you, Marco. Uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this episode of uh, OBG Corner. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, next week we'll bring some more exciting guests to talk about current affairs, politics and uh, news in uh, PNG. Thank you very much. And that's all we have for you tonight. For more business news, if you would simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at www.mtv.com.pg or to join the conversation, like our page on Facebook for daily business news or follow us on Twitter at BusinessPNG using the hashtag BusinessPNG. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Durari and this is BusinessPNG.